There is nothing worse than untapped potential. If you know that you're made for more, this is the place. I know that every successful person I've ever met has one thing in common. They do not let themselves fall victim to their circumstances. They figure out a way to rise above it. So join me on this journey where I help you to be better, do better, and have better in life and in business. If you're feeling stuck and you're needing some practical tools, some hope to get you to that better life, this is definitely the place for you. Welcome to the Unstuck Podcast. I'm your host, Lachelle Weemey, and you guys, we are all about getting you to a place of more impact and more income faster. And we recognize, you guys, that it is all about having clarity in, in what the vision is. It's all about getting confident around that and then getting into action, consistent action. And I cannot wait to hear how Cassie Sunshine adds to this conversation today. You guys, she is an amazing, amazing life and mindset coach, and she really loves working with, with busy moms, with young kids and really honestly not allowing them to succumb from their own dreams. Cassie, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited for our conversation. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited too. Girl, okay. So why don't you dive right in and tell us like when you yourself felt stuck and how the heck, you know, that all transpired to you being here with me right here today. Absolutely. So there's been kind of big two, two big pivotal moments in my life where I felt really stuck that's gotten me here. So I'll kind of give the cliff notes version of it. Yeah. Um, it all started back in 2015. I had just graduated my master's degree. So went to college, got the degree, had the good job, had the benefits, was checking off the boxes that my family had told me I needed to check off for my entire life. And I think I was like 25 years old at the time. Um, and I remember just being like, I'm, I'm miserable. Like if this is what life is for the next 50, 60 years, what's the point? Like I was already miserable at 25 years old. This was like the prime years of your life. I was unfulfilled. I was stressed out. I wasn't enjoying my life. And, but here I had spent all this money and time on, you know, a certain education and a certain career path. So I felt very stuck as like, well, what do I want? What do I do next? Who am I truly? And what is going to fulfill me? Because I had just been, I had spent so much time doing what I thought I should do yes, um, and pursuing the things I thought I should pursue that I didn't even know how to ask myself those questions. Like, what do I really want? And what's going to give me the life that I'm truly going to enjoy? Um, yeah. And that's when life coaching started for me. So I ended up going to a networking event. I didn't want to go. I was tired, but just felt some kind of intuition that I needed yeah. to be there. Yeah, um, It's crazy. I know. And then I met a life coach there. I'd never heard of coaching. I used to joke that I'd love to get paid for, you know, giving advice and talking to people. So that's who I was as a person. <laughs> Met this life coach and it was like a light bulb went off. Instantly, I was like, I don't know what that is, but I need to know what that is. Um, and so it resonated immediately. There was like that kind of instinctual, I need to do this in my life. Ended up within two days, I had signed up for a very expensive training program, dove right in, like the most kind of impromptu decision I've ever made in my life. Cause it just was like following instinct purely yes. at that time. Yes. So that's when my life coaching journey started. I went through that year long training program. I started coaching. I have my business. I'm really passionate. I'm doing speaking events. I'm, you know, I'm getting going right. Fast forward to the other big stuck moment in my life. Um, I found out unexpectedly that I was pregnant in December of 2020. So during COVID a lot going on, obviously, um, I've wanted to be a mom my entire life, but I wasn't planning it in that exact moment necessarily. Yeah. Um, and during my pregnancy, I ended up experiencing depression and anxiety during my pregnancy. So I knew all about postpartum, mm -hmm. didn't feel like anybody was talking about like while you're pregnant. And it really hit me like a brick wall. Um, mm -hmm. I felt completely disconnected from my passions, my dreams, like what I wanted, where I was going, um, almost like an out of body experience yeah. to some yeah. degree. Yeah. And then, you know, that carried over from my pregnancy into, you know, having my daughter. I experienced postpartum depression afterwards as well. I remember one day looking in the mirror and just feeling like I was looking at a different human being. It wasn't even the physical part of it. Mm -hmm. I felt so disconnected from that person staring back at me that I didn't feel alive necessarily. I wasn't passionate. I wasn't excited. I wasn't joyful. I was going through the motions right. and I knew something had to change because I was kind of a, a shell of a person at that point. Mm -hmm. And I, I was trying to figure out how to reconnect with me and my passions and my dreams and my sense of identity outside of motherhood. And initially I tried to like get back to who I was before, 
right? That's what they say. Try to get back. Yeah. Tried to hustle. I tried to work harder. I tried to stay up later. I tried to do all the things that I used to do the way I used to do it. Yeah. And it was not working. It was making me more resentful, more anxious, more exhausted. And so I really came to this, this pivotal point where I realized I had to let myself evolve Mm -hmm. into the new person that I was. I wasn't, you know, giving up who I was, but I was evolving with who I was, bringing that into who I was currently and who I'm going to become in the future right. and embraced that and saw the, the the benefit of that. And that's really when I started to be able to come become unstuck and move forward again in my personal goals and dreams. Oh my gosh. Okay. So there's so much in there that I can relate to. And the first is, I'm just going to go back to when you made that first decision, when you were stuck to leave a job, because I, I did the same thing, right? Like I, I went, got my, my bachelor's, my master's, eventually even my doctorate degree oh, wow. <laughs> and, you know, stepped away from that in order to follow where, where I felt God was leading me, but man, it's really scary. And tell us a little bit about that experience for you. How did you get to the point where you're like, all right, like I'm ready to do this. Yeah. It means terrifying, right? Especially depending on your support structure and the people in your life, my yeah. family, like my grandparents both have PhDs. My parents have degrees. So education and a stable career path yes. um, is the typical and the norm in my family. So right. I was really stepping off that that path. And that was challenging to kind of go against um, what I had been raised on, what everybody thought was normal. It took me some time, right? I jumped into the, the training program, kind of dabbled with it. And I was like, okay, what do I really want to do with this? How do I want to go about this? And I'll be honest, it, it took me a while. I kept getting pulled back to the norm. Pulled mm -hmm. back to my typical typical way of doing things. Fear kicked in. Um, obviously, the self judgment, guilt, all the all the mindset pieces. Right. Wow. One of the big things for me though is I ended up getting into a car accident mm -hmm. um, about a year and a half into my business, um, and it was a huge wake up call for me. And I firmly believe it was the universe nudging me in a certain direction. So. I really believe that the universe um, talks to us in a lot of ways and sends us kind of signals. Um, and it starts with very like subtle signals of what the direction we should be going in and the path that we should be taking. And eventually, if you don't listen, it's going to have to do some kind of big emotional impact. Could be a divorce, could be an illness, could be a breakup, could be a car accident, could be a layoff. And that's usually when change comes is when we go through some big emotional impact. Oh, yeah. And for me, that definitely contributed to it where I realized I had time off after the accident. So one, I saw how different I was yeah. outside of a job when I was really yeah. pursuing what I wanted to pursue. Yeah. And despite having a brain injury, my business was the most successful that it had been during that time because I was aligned and I was happy and I was pursuing the things that I wanted to pursue. And I was like, wow, there's, there's something to this. Yeah. Um, and that's when I made the decision that like, I needed to make a change clearly because I wasn't on the right path. And yeah. I was trying to ignore where I really knew I was supposed to be going. And I totally believe that, that what is meant for us will find us and it will continue to knock, knock louder, knock louder, oh, yeah. until it hits us over the head <laughs> finally. Exactly. And so this is where I want you to go. And, and that's how I describe things in a, in a way that God opens doors and closes doors. And that's kind of what had happened to me. I was working alongside of my career and actually COVID took me out of the operating room from doing anesthesia because we had locked down from elective surgeries. And I got to a place where I was like, oh my gosh. Like, this is a glimpse of what my life will exactly. and look like. And, and just like you said, like it sparks something inside of you that, that you can't ignore and that it leads you to where you're supposed to go. And I think that's why it's so important to acknowledge, you know, that part of your journey, because when you lost that, you knew what that felt like. And right. a lot of people that are listening have never felt that. So they need to take that first brave step, like what you did, but it's almost worse when you know that it's, it's something that you felt like you've mm -hmm. been in alignment, you were rocking and rolling, like exactly. all of you were working, you knew all the things. And I think sometimes as coaches, right, we can get really down on ourselves because you're like, dang it, Cassie, you already know this stuff. Why are you letting this impact you again? That is and so I felt true. Super stuck for a while. And I'm like, here I had the Unstuck podcast. And it's like, then you, you know, take that shame cycle, just shoots you down. But but you but you knew what that felt like at one point. And so I love that 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 guided you, like, okay, I don't like what I'm seeing now. What do I need to do? Exactly. To change. And one of the things that I have found that successful people have in common is the number one is they recognize that desire. Like they recognize that, that kindling inside of them, like something's not right. I want better mm -hmm. Then they make the decision to figure it out. 
and then they do what they need to do. Right. And that's really where you were. Mm -hmm. And so tell us a little bit about how you were able to get yourself out of that funk and into, and back into alignment with who you are and how you're helping other people do it. Absolutely. So there's some really key things. It's funny, as you mentioned, as a coach, we often say like, I, I know this stuff, right? I should yeah. be able to, to get myself out of this. Right. Um, and it kind of was, I had to go back to the fundamentals of literally what I teach, what I help other people with. <laughs> um, it's funny as a coach, you often can do it for others, but it's hard to do it for yourself sometimes. Oh, that's why all um, coaches have coaches, right? Exa- exactly. I have coaches, I have multiple coaches right <laughs> now. Insane. So <laughs> um, if your coach doesn't have coaches, it's actually a red flag in my book because I, right. you always totally need to be agree. getting help for yourself. So Um, one of the big things is I had to go back to a vision, a vision of my why and what I wanted and what I was creating. Um, I had lost touch with that because the vision shifted. I became a mom and my life shifted and I shifted and my brain shifted and where I was going. And I had to, again, stop trying to kind of get back to the old vision and build an evolved vision of, okay, now I'm in this chapter in this season of my life. What does that vision look like for me? So, um, I always look three years out, um, one year is a little too soon. Five years is too far. So I try to look three years out and really getting that clarity as to like what I want, why I'm doing it, because from that vision, I can then start making aligned decisions. So I was really making what I like to call circumstance-based decisions out of fear and exhaustion. Yes. Um, a lot of, again, what I thought I should be doing and how yeah. I should be doing yeah. it. React you kid, your, your family's react, you know, respond, yeah. Um, yeah. um, relying on you. Yes. So there's more pressure to not take crazy leaps of faith. And depending on what you're doing, because I now have this little human being who is depending on me in so many ways. So I had to catch my thinking. I had to switch from that circumstance-based thinking that I'd kind of gone back into, back yep. into what I call vision-driven thinking and leveraging that vision to make decisions forward and take action steps that were aligned and in the right direction. Because when you do that, other things start to fall into place. I call it compounding action. So yes. it's kind of like compounding interest, right? One penny to two to four to eight. Yes. If you take aligned action and the right kind of action for you that is meant for you on your path, it will start to compound to bigger leaps forward and it won't feel like a struggle. It won't feel as hard because yes. there's alignment there. Oh my gosh. And I think that you, you nailed something that I believe so much in is that aligned action. It's the next step for you. It's the next right step. And when you can get into that alignment with where you're supposed to be going, you don't have to work harder. It's like the quantum exactly. field brings into the space where you're doing what you were already doing, but it, it gets you to where you want to go faster. And I think that oftentimes we get sucked into the hustling for the sake of hustling. Yes. A lot of my clients will do that. They they want to get out of their, their career. They want to get their business to a point where they can step away. And their natural inclination is to do, just do more, work more, work harder, work later. And then it just leads to burnout. 100%. I, I was that person. I wore hustle like a badge of honor. Like that was me. <laughs> I would work later. I would get up earlier. I would sacrifice more. And like, it was a pride thing, right? Because in our society, it is yeah. valued. People right. talk about it like it's something you should be proud of. Yes. Um, and as a mom, I realized I couldn't do that because it was exa- it was doing that. It was burning me out. It was putting me into overwhelm. And so I really actually like had to reframe my mindset around it. Um, and I talk a lot about this now where I had to find harmony in my life. Yes. I don't like the word balance because balance alludes to equality. And yes. there's not going to be equality at all times. My kid is going to trump things at certain times. And there's yep. times where my, my business and my dreams yes. are going to trump other things, yes. but they can ebb and flow together. And I, as Absolutely. a mom had to find that harmony because yes. just trying to hustle and grind is an emotional roller coaster that absolutely burns you out. And we burn out, we crash, we recover, we do some self-care, and then we start it all over again. Yes. It's not sustainable. It's not like motivating and it's exhausting. It often leads to us giving up. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. And I think that just going back to the reactive decisions that, that we make, that will lead us feeling like we're not in control. Absolutely. And that we are, you know, victims of whatever circumstance that we're in, but really you guys, we get a chance to choose accountability, choose our choices, choose alignment, choose intentionality and creating our life and our business by design rather than being the, you know, the, the tail that wags the dog, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. When you make circumstance-based decisions and reactive decisions, you get more of those results. They yes. might look a twinge different, but you end up because you're, where you're making the decision from actually contributes to the results that you're ultimately going to get. So if you make it from your current circumstances, you're going to get more of your current yeah. circumstances. Yeah. 
And you mentioned a few minutes ago that you were close to giving up. And I hear that a lot. And that is like the thing that drives me to continue to show up for other people is because I do not want people to give up on their dreams. And I want you to talk a little bit about that and the impact that that decision is currently even making in your life. Absolutely. I mean, I think anybody, anybody in entrepreneurship, you want to quit all the time. It's like, you know, 20 times a day. Right. (laughs) But there, you know, I think especially in my motherhood journey, there were some pivotal moments where, you know, we got hit with some life things, right. We're going through a cross country move and there were some financial things and all these circumstances were piling up all this evidence as to why it shouldn't work right now, or it couldn't work right now. And I remember even having a conversation with, um, you know, with my boyfriend saying, Hey, I think I need to put this all on pause. I need to stop it. Maybe I'll come back to it in a couple of years. It's not what's right for the family, blah, blah, blah. I was really upset. It's funny how I had a physical reaction to saying those words. Mm -hmm. I mean, I immediately was very emotional, could feel it internally. And I was like, wow, that clearly to me, the signal, this is not the right step. Um, Because I should have that visceral, visceral of a reaction to a decision that I'm making was the first indication for me that like, this is bad. But for me, it was, my daughter was sitting in front of me um, and I looked down at her and I was like, if I do this, if I put me on pause, if I literally stop something that feels like an arm or a leg to me, like this is who I am. It's a part of my being and and how I want to be in this world. If I stop that and give up on that, what am I showing her? What am I teaching her? And then one day when she has these dreams and goals for her life, I'm going to feel like a hypocrite. You know, I, I can tell her all day long to follow her dreams and pursue them, but I want her to see me doing that. I also want her to get the best version of me. If I put part of me on hold or cancel it or try to bury it down, she is not getting the best version of a mom and I'm not going to show up fully in my life and that's going to impact everybody around me. So when I really started to realize that, I was like, well, yes, this is terrifying and I'm still exhausted and scared and there's so many you know components. It would literally be like trying to cut off a leg or an arm right now and I wouldn't be a whole person anymore and they wouldn't get a whole person from me. Yes. Oh my gosh. That is giving me goosebumps because it's so true. And I think that we think that we're sacrificing in air quotes for our family, but really we're sacrificing showing them if we quit that it's possible. We, we need to be able to model that for them. We need to be able to model what it's like to go after our dreams yes. and actually like do it instead of talking about it, mm-hmm. right? Like I'm in the middle right now as we record this of writing my book. So by the time this is gonna air, it's gonna be out and published in the beautiful world. I can say that I'm going to do this. I want to do this. I want to write a book someday till I'm blue in the face, but my kids need to see me actually doing what I said I was gonna do. They mm-hmm. need to see me you know, getting up at 5 a.m. to write. They need to see me doing the things that keep me going and the resilience and and what happens when I hit a roadblock and what happens when I hit rejection and what happens when I, you know, do something that's really scary and putting myself out there that's really scary. I cannot tell them mm-hmm. as much as I can show them. I love and that. When we, and when we are putting ourselves on the back burners, we're not doing them any favors, you guys. Exactly. I, as I would say, like your family deserves your dreams as much as you do. They yeah. benefit from you pursuing the things that fill your cup. Cause think of it this way, right? Your cup is going to fill with something. Mm-hmm. Do you want it to be filled with stress and anxiety and resentment and regret and wondering, and that's, what's pouring over into your family. Yeah. Or do you want it filled with fulfillment and joy and excitement and hope? And yes, there might, you might be scared and there mm-hmm. might be unknowns. That's never going to go away. Right. But ultimately, I would rather be doing something scared and have it be messy and still be fulfilled and excited and joyful and hopeful in that process because that is what I want to pour over into my family. And I want to show them, show her, especially that her dreams matter. I don't care who says they don't. I don't care how scary it is. I don't care what society says, like your dreams matter and you deserve to not have to sacrifice those to be there for everybody else. I can be a good mom and still take care of myself and pursue my dreams. And I actually think I'm a better mom for it. A hundred percent. And that was one of the biggest ahas that I had when I started my entrepreneurial business, because like you, I was, you know, doing all the things, right. Got, went to school, got the good job, doing all the things. And I literally didn't realize that the, and life existed. Mm. I thought I had to choose between being challenged and fulfilled and having a life that I loved or 
being a present mom and wife, right? And mm -hmm. it was when I recognized this entrepreneurial journey allowed for me to come alive in ways that I could control and I could be challenged and fulfilled on my terms and design my life around being there for my kids, to design a life that allows for me to, to do all the things that light me up and then allow, like you said, all of that passion to overflow out of me. Instead of, I think a lot of times we think of ourselves as, you know, the, the base that is constantly pouring over into other people. Right. And, 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 and I have to be honest with you as part of my journey, I recognized that I was um, serving and doing things for other people in order to get validation and worthiness back. That's so, as a really good way of looking at that. Yeah. And I, I was, you know, I hate to admit it because, because, it, but it's true. Like I was doing things for other people in order to feel needed, to mm -hmm. feel loved, to feel mm -hmm. validated. That is a crappy way to, to give up myself, right? Like if I just need to you do it to get something back, whether I hated to admit it or not, it was true. And once we get to a point where we are so full of love and life and, and passion that everything that we do serves from a place of overflowing from our picture of that. Yes. Right. Yes. It's, it's, it's a totally new energy. It's a totally different way to show up and they get to see that it's the, yep. and they benefit from it. They, right. that benefits them yes. in so many ways. Oh my gosh. Right. And I mean, I think about that. Like I, I was able to just like you, you know, eventually quit my job my kids get to see me in the morning now before they go to school and be, and when they get home and I had the most amazing day, like my husband's a teacher and he's like, Oh my God, thank God it's Friday. You know? And I'm yeah. like, honestly, I love Fridays. I love Mondays. I love Wednesdays. I love Tuesdays, you know? And I want my kids to see that. And it we makes me a get better so mom when they days. get home. <laughs> like that's the thing. So like, why, like, I hate this idea of like, I remember feeling like I was praying for Friday, dreading Monday. And I was like, that's five days of the week that I am just trying to like get through. Yeah. What a crazy way to live. And, and, and that's like the norm. That's yeah. what we're just told. Like, well, that's just the way it is. Why? Like that should, yeah. you have no idea how many days you are given. We have absolutely no right. idea right. how many days that we have. And we're wishing days away, waiting yes. for a couple of days. And then we don't even enjoy those days because we're dreading getting back in the cycle yeah. over again. And like, I said, yeah. I do not want to show my kids that that's what they should expect. And right. that is the norm. And that's what they should accept in their life. Yes. I want to show them to demand better than that, because I think we deserve to have better than that, but we've just been programmed, but mm, that's okay. That's acceptable. Go with it. And I want to just make a quick point because as moms, right. We're not saying that we are painting this picture of this pie in the sky, beautiful oh. life of chasing rainbows and unicorns. It's I remember what the, the author's name is, but he, he, he said it this way. He's like, you're never going to have 100% everything being fun in your life, no matter what. And it really just depends on which shit sandwich you're willing to eat. <laughs> and I'm like, that is such a great way to put it because there's always going to be things that are going to be hard always. that are gonna make us be fearful that are going to be, yep. um, push us. And I want my kids to see me bumping up against those and then moving right through them. Mm -hmm. I want, I'm not painting a picture to them that you don't need to go to college and you can do yeah, it. No. It's yep. like, if that's their journey, that's their journey. But, and, and it's going to take hard work and it's going to show up, take showing up when you don't feel like it. And it's going to take being brave and courageous. And it's going to take all these things. But at the end of the day, I do not want you to settle. And that's the thing. Like I, that's exactly. Fine. It's not saying like, Oh, my kid has to go be an entrepreneur, right? Or everybody should pursue yeah. entrepreneurship and quit your job. Yeah. It's just saying that like, check in with yourself, right? Check in and see, like, do you spend your days for the majority of it? It's not going to be hundred percent, but like, do you look forward to your day? Do you dread getting up in the morning? Are you excited about what you're doing? Do you feel like you're making an impact? Like checking in with yourself continuously, because it's going to change as well. Right. And whatever their journey is, if it's college, if it's trade school, if it's entrepreneurship, if it's being a stay-at-home mom, whatever it is, as long as it's aligned for you, yes. because I firmly believe that our dreams, our passions, our goals, the paths that we feel called to, they're not coincidences. No. Like they're given to us for a reason. There's a reason I am passionate about what I am passionate about. Yes. And my sister is completely passionate about something else. Yes. And, you know, my boyfriend is an engineer and he loves engineering and that's his, he enjoys it. Yes. There's a reason for that. Right. But when we ignore those things that we know that like it's out of alignment or it's not right for us, that's when things just 
aren't right. And I want to show my kids like to listen to that, to listen yeah. to that internal GPS system and trust it and validate it. Yes. And don't let society tell you what path you need to go down. hundred percent. I think one of, I, I kind of joke that my, my least favorite four letter F word is fine. Mm, oh my gosh. Yes. Because, so true. because that means that we're settling. And I think that what is so beautiful about our conversation up till now is that you have allowed people to explore what that means in a way that is trusting our intuition. Because I think a lot of people that are listening are struggling with the clarity. Like, I don't freaking so, know what it is that I'm yes. supposed to do. <laughs> I know that something's not right. And I know that there's something more for me, but I don't know what that is or how I'm supposed to put all my pieces of the puzzle together. And I love how you've been able to, to give us such great examples of trusting that intuition to, to know, like when something feels right, or when you have an exaggerated emotional response to something and using it as like, I imagine it, like we're bowling and there's some bumpers, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's it, keeping you yep. inside the bumpers. If you're willing to listen to it. Yes. I call it notice what you're noticing, right? Yes. You notice, um, like even thinking about, so a lot of my clients come to me and say, I have an idea of what I might want, but I don't really know, but I know I'm not happy where I'm at. Right. Yes. And so it starts by just getting curious. One, just giving yourself permission yes. to get curious about what it is that you would love, not looking at your current circumstances. Don't look at your education. Don't look at your finances. Yes. Don't look at what you've done up until now, but get curious because the universe is sending you signals. It's longing and discontent. If you're longing for certain things, if there's things that you're like, ah, this feels icky to me, yes. start to notice that. Notice yes. that constriction inside of you. If yes. you think of doing certain things or pursuing certain pathways and you feel constricted, there's a reason for that generally. And so start to listen to that. Or if something like when I met that life coach, right. And she said the word life coach, and I instantly felt expansive. There yes. was like a light inside of me. And I was like, I don't know what that is, but I, that's a signal to me that something clearly is in this pathway for me. I didn't have all the answers. I didn't know what that journey was going to look like. I was terrified of yes. going down this unknown path but I knew something clicked for me. And so learning to listen to those internal signals, why yes. call it your internal GPS. It's yes. also why like, be careful about who you go to for advice. Because again, yes. your mom, your sister, your friend, they don't know your internal signals. As a right. coach, I don't even know them. My job yes. is to help you identify yes. them, help yes. you know how to notice them, help you know how to listen to them and still move forward. Even if you're scared, even if these, there's the unknown, I'm trained to do that as a coach. That's why people are like, oh, I can just go to my friend for advice. They're like, but they're listening to their internal signals yes. when they give you that advice. They mean yes. well, by all means, but you have to learn how to tap into your own intuition and your own signals. Yes. And then you build from there. You start to take steps and you get curious and that will give you more clarity. Don't worry about the job title or the location or the company or the business exactly. Start to take steps. You know, what impact do you want to have? How do you want to feel every day? How do you want your days to be like? And this is what I do when I build a vision, right? You start to build a blueprint and yes. you add on to it like you would a house. Eventually you have your countertops and your windows and your flooring, but you didn't start with all of that. You start with kind of an idea of what's the shape? How many rooms do you want, right? Do you want one floor? Do you want two floors? And then you get more and more specific and then you can start to build it. So how, Cassie, do you um, help people get the confidence to step into this? Because it, confidence is something that's so huge. And you and I both like are, <laughs> are such a, such a big believers in confidence. Um, but one of the things that I want to just touch on, and then I want to hear what you have to say is that everything that you just said talks about action. And I always tell people that your confidence is not going to be the first step. It's the courage mm -hmm. and the confidence will follow, but there is definitely a lot of old paradigms that we have to, to meet Absolutely, 100%. Um, and, and to replace and bad thinking and, or negative thinking and negative self-talk and all the things that, that really impact our ability to show up like the power powerhouse we are, or we can be. So what do you like to give people um, to, to really help build that confidence in themselves. Yeah. I mean, mindset is it's, it's the start to everything. So I right. was like, you go to the gym to work your body out, right? We need to work our brain the same way. And to your point, we all have a lot of stuff built up in there. A lot of paradigms, a lot of beliefs, a lot of stories from our childhood, from our experiences, from all the things that we've gone through when nobody taught us how to understand all that, that time. So it just kind of got like 
put in our brain and it's sitting back there in our subconscious most of the time. So I talk to a lot about like installing what I call confident mindset system. So think of it like your house, right? Your house is electrically wired for, you know, electric and a temperature. If your house is set to like 72 degrees, it will regulate no matter how hot or how cold it is. We have a set point for success that's very similar. So we need to rewire and connect different pathways to change our set point for success. If you just take the actions, you might get some level of it, but usually your life will regulate back. It's why you might go to the gym and you might lose some weight and then you gain it back. It's why you make some traction in your business and then fear kicks in or life kicks in or something happens and you backtrack. So it's, it'll get you somewhere, but it's not sustainable and long-term without pairing it with the mindset and the confidence. So it's very big. We got action and mindset. It can't be either or by themselves. They go hand in hand, but for confidence, one of the biggest things is one, just you have to start to learn what those stories are, those paradigms and those beliefs, because until you notice them, you can't rewire them and you can't ignore them. You can't overpower them. You can't ask they're not there because what you resist actually gets stronger. So when a a thought comes up, that's not confident, that's fearful, right? Oh, I'm going to, you know, what if my family goes bankrupt and I can't put a roof over our head? Or what if I fail at this and it looks really bad? Or what if I do this and this thing happens? Yeah. Notice it. Don't beat yourself up. Don't right. get angry with yourself. Say, okay, I noticed that. That's probably fear. That's probably old stories. You know, where, you know, and then say, okay, that doesn't feel empowering. That doesn't feel expansive. Yeah. Yeah. What would replace that with something else, right? So whether it's you know a mantra or a story or a different belief, replace that. And repeat that to yourself over and over again, because the more that you do it, the more that that story becomes your hard wiring in your brain and yeah. not the previous one. But just like push ups, you can't go to the gym once, try to do push ups and think you're going to do 800 of them, right? Yes. Like it's repetition, it's over and over again. It's why it's like working your mindset out repeatedly, noticing it, you know, um, changing the narrative, changing the story, repeating that to yourself, and just doing that over and over again until it becomes more of your natural. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Cassie, for real, like we've already been talking for like 30 minutes, girl, I could talk to you all day long. We are so in alignment. You guys, I know that you guys can tell that as well. And I'm sure that because you're here listening to me, you're going to want to get to know Cassie even better. So Cassie, how don't, how about you tell us, you know, how we can get a hold of you. I'll make sure that all of your cool stuff is in the show notes, you guys. So it's easy, but, but tell us a little bit about how you are showing up in the world and how we can support you. Absolutely. So um, obviously my website, it's just CassieSunshine.com. Pretty simple. And then all the social media. So Facebook and Instagram are where I primarily show up Um, as a busy mom. Instagram is just easier right now. So it's just um, Cassie Sunshine Life Coach on both of those profiles. And then hopefully by the time this airs, my podcast will be out. Um, So um, that will be very exciting. I'll make sure you get that information as well, how to check that out. um, Because I'm very excited to support moms through that. Awesome. Is there anything that you wanted to mention before we wrap this up that we haven't gotten to? Cause I really want to make sure that I've given you the opportunity to, to say all the cool stuff that's on your mind. Yeah. I mean, I think I've gotten to talk a lot about it. I think the main thing is just, um, remembering that again, you deserve your dreams. Your family deserves your dreams and you don't have to do it all at once. And that's a big thing, right? Like, don't feel like you have to, you know, bite off the whole puzzle now, but it's just taking the step that you can take and then letting that step show you the next step. And I think, especially for any moms out there, um, feeling really stuck or have experienced, um, whether it be depression or anxiety or just motherhood is freaking hard. I just want to really validate that like that is so true. And you can still find a way to move forward without sacrificing being a great mom. That is what I am all about helping. And I pivoted my business to focus on moms for this reason, because I needed the support. It was hard to find and I want to support other moms in doing it. So just know that like, you don't have to stay stuck where you are. Um, You can take the one step that you can take and let that show you the next one. Oh my gosh. I love that. You guys, I just am so grateful for casting. I'm sure you are too. So girlfriend, every single episode, I finish with a question that I ask the guest to, to present to the audience that you can help them to, to think of something that's going to get them, you know, where they want to go. So what question would you ask them to think? about? Well, that's a really, okay. Let me think about that for a second. A question to help you guys out. I guess my question would be, you know, when your kids are older, you know, 18, 20, 21 years old, what do you want their experience of you to have, to have been? What do you want them to reflect back on? Say, I watched my mom do this and live like this, um, and show up like this, ask yourself that then ask, 
is it, is what I'm doing now in alignment with creating that version of me and what I want their experience of me to be? Oh my gosh. The law of assumption, you guys, that is powerful. Cassie, that was beautiful. I always do that on purpose to you guys, because I want your intuition to guide that question. And that was spot on. So you guys make sure that you are tuning in. If you haven't left a review yet, please do that. If you haven't, um, you know, taken a picture of us and posted it all over your social that like, this is a great episode, please do that as well. And, and tag both of us so that we can interact with you. And if you are struggling, if you're feeling stuck, if you're ready to, to get yourself to a place where you're living the and life, you need to reach out. Let's have a, let's have a conversation and see if this is something that, that we need to get you to go and, and do. So, all right, you guys have a great rest of your day, Cassie. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Untuck Podcast. I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you. And don't forget to check out the show notes if you want to get into my private club, The Better Club, to be able to learn better ways to be better, do better, and have better. So until next time, keep showing up. Let's get unstuck together. Have a great day.